Welcome to Becca Creations podcast. My name is Jofi and I live in Transylvania. This is my knitting podcast um, spiced up with uh, my love with, for nature and gardening. So today I'm outside. It's been a wow long day. I've been all day on the homestead digging, planting, foraging, cooking, cleaning. <laughs> painting everything you can imagine i hope you like uh, my setting i hope the wind is not too loud and uh, we can have a super quick episode again i'm so happy to talk about my ufos today uh, maybe a couple of episodes ago you saw a pile of um, knitwear that were unfinished and they were like with the past from the past two years and i actually had five garments without sleeves so and from that pile I uh, finished uh, three um, three garments so one uh, skirt and two um, uh, sweaters and sleeves for the sweaters so the sweaters got sleeves now not all of them but two of them so this is like quite a good uh, achievement so the first <laughs> some bee. <laughs> it's so happy to, to have the bees out, right? Oh, windy. Yeah, dogs barking, birds singing and uh, yeah, everything uh, finally come uh, to life here as well in Transylvania. So my first uh, finished UFO is uh, this one, this jumper that I'm wearing. It's uh, the wrought iron sweater by Anna Johanna, a Finnish uh, designer and I cast this on in February 2020 and it was a test knit for her as she only needed the just this uh, upper portion like the neckline because you start up on the back and then you do the two sides and connect it together and just for the number she needed the testers just sometimes uh, having a test line and having a test line a test knit and a deadline um it's kind of like pushing me to finish stuff and i'm just uh, yeah i just sometimes lose interest so and now i am so happy that i finished it it's because it's really just like how it looks on the picture it's like boxy and uh, it's great let me show it to you it's a great lace pattern on the front panel i really uh, love this uh, patterning and i intentionally even choose a um, pretty large size to have it pretty boxy and uh, yeah it was like sitting for a really long time uh, in a bag without sleeves and now finally i got sleeves the problem was that i run out the yarn of the blue yarn and this yarn got discontinued and i couldn't find it again and it's uh, like a super wash uh, commercial yarn and uh, i was searching searching for something similar and i found from ice yarns something that was uh, pretty close in the color uh, the shades maybe i don't know you cannot really tell just maybe uh, just a little bit like on the top here on the, on the sleeves they are like a little bit different shades it's kind of uh, visible with uh, eyes with the eyes but uh, it's okay because uh, the whole body is in one type of yarn and the arms are the other type of yarn and this other type of yarn is actually not uh, uh, 100% full it has cotton and polyamide in it I think so yeah but uh, still I think it looks good and it's totally wearable I love the construction of this uh, sweater because it's so smart <laughs> and it's so fun because uh, you see the whole sweater is in the round there is no seaming on this sweater but uh, you are working uh, this front uh, panel in a different color so um, you can imagine like probably i don't remember which side but probably over this line you would like start going uh, 
all the way around and then you would turn back and go another way around and you just knit like this in circle back and forth but at the end you have uh, like a seamless uh, in the round garment so uh, I think that was really ingenious uh, technique and I actually want to try this uh, technique again I'm compelled to make another road iron jumper like this in a lighter colorway it just I don't know I I love this so much and uh, the the front panel the lace panel is knitted in um, hand dyed yarn it's a Koigu KPM. I had one skein of this Koigu yarn and uh, uh, 50 grams so it's a fingering weight yarn and uh, I even have uh, had enough um, leftovers to use it for another jumper and this other jumper is uh, not such an old UFO but still it's from last year it was my uh, Christmas cast on the mistletoe sweater by Ludmila Aksenik and um, I used the same grey for uh, this one yeah so this is like also pretty amazing right so happy that I finished it was like also stuck on C sleeve island for quite a long time but uh, I can say that once I start sleeves and uh, I am just getting to the rhythm of the magic loop and everything I can pretty much forget uh, about what I'm doing or kind of like uh, it becomes meditative and I'm not bored of it at all and it's like rhythmical and it goes so fast it's like I can finish one sleeve like in two days and sometimes I forget about myself and I make them even way longer than I intended to. So uh, let's put this other one on. I am in my mistletoe sweater, my Christmas mat sweater, and it's finally done. And I think it's so beautiful and so elegant. I had difficulties uh, working with black yarn, but I love to wear black. And I think uh, sometimes we just really need a few pieces uh, in black, like sweaters and cardigans too, right? So I'm really happy to have finally one black piece of... Uh, garment and um, I talked about uh, this construction and my uh, yoke surgery in another episode and I will link that down below the hem here and uh, it's kind of rolling back so it's uh, it's kind of loses itself in the fabric so it's not that great but uh, I did not block this one so the other garment I blocked and it was beautiful because of the lace and this garment is not blocked yet it's full with some white hairs I guess uh, that is from some other project with alpaca that project is like leaving marks everywhere <laughs> So I'm recording between the wind bl blows. <laughs> so I ripped back the hem like three times because I really was trying everything to not roll and they're still rolling. And now I did, <laughs> the last time I did, yeah, I did the most stitch was rolling up. I did now garter stitch and it's still rolling. So it's not itself the portion which is garter is rolling. It's actually where I change from reverse talking up to... Uh, Mostage or garter, that's where it's rolling itself up. But uh, let's see what's gonna happen after I block it. And if not, then I probably have to do a sweater surgery again on this one. But uh, I think I have a solution, so I have one more option if the hem is still gonna be rolling. And uh, this option is this uh, UFOs is all connected, right? <laughs> so this other <laughs> The the option that I have for the hem is to try the linen stitch. And linen stitch I learned on another UFO and this is the this is just a skirt pattern, it's destined for LB hand knits and it has no name and it didn't came out is the linen stitch and this is where I learned the linen stitch and this is so great. Oh yeah, and I did a smafu here because I reversed my uh, yeah 
that band over there and so this. So this is the right side of the linen stitch and it creates really such a woven looking fabric that it has no tendency at all to roll and this is how I finished actually uh, this uh, skirt as well with the linen stitch and this look it's just really great okay this one is blocked but it's no rolling so I think uh, there is still hope for uh, for all this uh, struggle of not to have a rolled hem yeah this is all about my mistletoe and it's a super wash yard and this uh, as I said the Koigo KPM so there was this super rush and I'm definitely gonna make, uh, I think, uh, first of all, more of uh, Ludmilla's uh, patterns. I love her patterns too. Really, really, it's hardcore how much explanation she had for this one too. It's like really, uh, for me, it's really well written. Pattern itself, it was like pretty sure, clear, and it's like taking you, uh, taking your hand like, really step by step and uh, different sizes have different uh, numbers of leaves over here and uh, yeah i think it's become such an elegant and lovely garment yeah <laughs> the skirt from lb handnits and uh, this skirt uh, also it's like a languishing project since a year now I cast this on in 2020, I guess 2020 it was like for everybody as a shock and I don't know, probably just, yeah, had no brain space for everything we did. And I also featured the skirt in my Ugly Knits episode because I was just not happy with the, these colors. So this yarn is uh, the back a sheep yarn that uh, I can find here locally. And when I was uh, learning uh, natural dye and I was experimenting a lot in my kitchen, I did these kind of colors and I really loved this um, a black, uh, gray, um, blue color gray color yeah with the summer but uh, these other colors i was not so happy with but uh, yeah i still started the skirt with it and uh, i don't know i was contemplating to dye the whole thing like this uh, a black and i probably will do that to have a black uh, knitted uh, uh, skirt but i am also thinking about to um to dye it black but like with the, a, in a gradient so it's like a, but a more softer gradient somehow like what is here i don't know if this will uh, happen if not um after all it's not that bad with the whole it's interesting i guess with the uh edging colors here and yeah the whole thing so it still needs buttons i haven't found buttons but yeah buttons will come after dying anyway so that's why there are no buttons and that's still okay we're not gonna fuss about it <laughs> and um yeah i love the berke yarn because now that i blocked it and washed it pretty throughoutly uh it plumps up and uh i had a problem with the uh, how see-through it was before and I did not like so much uh, the fabric uh, on my needles that was created but uh, actually it plumped up pretty well so it's uh, totally wearable I just still have to figure out uh, uh, what to do with it but uh, yeah why not a black sweater and black skirt it would be it would be something uh, yeah it would be something so yes, uh, this is, uh, how, how can I say exactly, this is like a great feeling to have uh, finished uh, three UFOs and uh, uh, this is kind of also my goal in my knitting bingo. And now because I uh, finished these UFOs, I decided in the month of May I'm gonna go on a cast on party <laughs> with myself on a casting on spree actually so I actually made a list of what I want to cast on and there are like minimum seven objects right now but I'm waiting a few confirmations for test uh, needs that I applied for so let's see if those are coming too because then they have priority but yeah no matter what happens I will um, 
I will cast down seven, seven uh, objects, new uh, objects, and um, I think I'm gonna take you along with me. So with the with the casting on party. So uh, you can expect for me to, that to be the next episode. And uh, I can say one of them that I really want to, <laughs> I really am thinking about. I'm so undecided about this. The Ranunculus. <laughs> I'm really undecided about the Ranunculus. What should I do? Should I cast it on to like everybody? Like really everybody is making a Ranunculus or making the fifth Ranunculus or fourth Ranunculus. It's like, wow, I am, how to say, I am super curious and super intrigued about why. <laughs> like, uh, is this really this uh, pattern? It's so great. It's it's really so much fun. Everybody says it's so much fun, but I have to see it myself. So probably I will have to fall into the line on the castellan too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so please tell me why should I why, or why shouldn't I cast on the Ranunculus? And um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Have a lovely, lovely, lovely time, lovely spring. And um, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>